Hey guys, how's it going? So we are down at our local community college for planting day number three. The first day we got the two entrance beds done, the second day we got a few containers and the huge area in front of the gym done. Today we are focusing on a 22 different containers that are kind of scattered around the campus and we've got a bunch of beautiful plants. We're starting down here by the Student Services Center, which oh my word, the overcast day is a gift, you guys. Last year when we did this, it was full sun and hot. This is the south side of the building, so we're focusing on some things that can take the heat and can take the sun. There are four round containers, so two 25 inches, that's one of them. There's, this is a 14 inch by 68 inch rectangular, so is this one. And then this one is a 21 inch. We've got another 21 inch right here. 25 inch right there. And what we're doing like we did last year, we're topping up all the containers with land and sea. They didn't really want to replace all the soil. And honestly, as long as it hasn't been bound up by roots, as long as we recharge it, everything did excellent down here. Um, usually I like to replace a little bit more of the soil, but I was really pleased with the results of doing this last year. So it was kind of an experiment. So we'll be topping up with land and sea, adding some biotone starter fertilizer, these are a few of the things that are going in this container or the things that are going in this container. We've got Play in the Blue Salvia. You'll see me use that a lot because this plant is amazing. We have Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, Supertunia Vista Bubblegum, and then a Sweet Heart Lime Sweet Potato Vine. And then in the 25 inch containers, I've got a Toucan Coral Canna. We've got Unplugged So Blue Salvia, which doesn't get as big as the Play in the Blues. And then we've got Supertunia Royal Velvet and a sweet heart lime sweet potato vine. And just to give you a point of reference, this is the fountain area. We planted this up last year and I think we're gonna be doing this later this week uh, with a bunch of beautiful things in the flower beds. And then there are containers. We're actually gonna plant these containers today. A few more of the containers are like around that building. Um, around that building over there, there's a couple containers. So because everything is a little bit scattered, I think what we're gonna do is go through and get everything planted. We're also gonna have to run back home a couple of times for plants and compost. I think we're just going to work through all of it and then we will go through slowly and do a tour afterward and I'll show you what went in every container and kind of explain uh, my thought process. Here we go.
we got it all done. It was a beautiful day. The sun's starting to come out a little bit, so I figured we'd start our tour right at the last couple of pots that we planted because they're in the nice shade of a couple of locust trees. Isn't this a nice seating area? It's just so pleasant over here. And you can see Rosa's tank. I think she just headed inside, but she's been kind of going behind us and watering everything in. And you may have also seen Amy in and out. She was here helping us this morning. So in these containers, I did a mixture of shade and part shade plants. I did them identical because they're so close to each other. It just is a striking thing when you've got two of the same thing going on. We do have one more container right over there that's more uh, full sun. We're gonna be doing that a different day once I get all the plants for it. Uh, but I just wanted to walk you through the design of this one. So as our centerpiece, we have Prince Tut, which I do think that this area gets enough light to keep them happy. They may not grow as big as they could potentially grow um, if they were planted in full sun, but they're such a beautiful texture. I actually find that in our area where we can tend to have some very harsh dry conditions, uh, they do a little bit better when they're protected from the intense afternoon sun. They don't tend to burn on the tops as much. So I think they're gonna be a wonderful centerpiece in here. And then I put four lime thyme coleus, which these will get like, ooh, they'll be beautiful. They'll fill in and they will be kind of a step down possibly from this. They may kind of compete with this. We'll have to see how it goes uh, because they are a vigorous uh, coleus. And I really like the bright green because I feel like, well, I used the double up pink and the lime thyme and actually the hippo rose here in our window boxes last year. And I absolutely loved it because it's very visually cool uh, and it just helps where it's so hot here. We've got bewitched after midnight sweet potato vine, just a super bold, beautiful uh, sweet potato vine that can hand sh handle shadier conditions. And then, yeah, just a repeat of all those things. So we've got the double up pink. These are awesome in containers and in the landscape and they can handle various types of light. Um, hippo rose, yeah, let me swing you around the backside. So just kind of a repeat pattern of all of those. I think this might be one of my favorites from today. And this one, I can't wait to show you how it looks once it's grown for a couple of months. Okay, the fountain courtyard area is over here, so we're gonna start our walk. I gotta find Aaron. Aaron? Oh, <laughs> I kind of thought you walked in this direction. Yeah. <laughs> Are you hiding from the camera? Yes. <laughs> We're gonna get our steps in today. Yeah. Okay, we've made it to the fountain area, which I have heard that they're actually taking this fountain out. They're gonna still have a water feature, but it's gonna be one that disappears into the ground instead of having a reservoir in here. Cause I guess I've heard all kinds of things happen. Like students put food coloring in there yeah. and all kinds of things and it is falling apart. People's children fall in the, <laughs> in the pool. <laughs> what, what people? <laughs> A little boy by the name of Benjamin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of falling apart just a little bit as well. So it's time. Uh, so there are four rectangular shaped planters that circle this area. And let me find the one with the most color because the cannas don't have a ton of color yet. I think there's color on each one of these. Okay, so we've got the cannas, toucan coral. And then in between those, we have the unplugged blue salvia. So that once they fill in will be an incredibly striking vertical interest. Well, in the, the uh, salvia will bush out too. And then we've got Super Tunia Bordeaux, which will completely fill in this area. And Lemon Coral Sedum is super vigorous as well. I anticipate, I think the vigor of both of these is really well matched. If you put like a Super Tunia Vista bubblegum with a Lemon Coral, you might have some issues with the bubblegum wanting to take it over. But I think this will be a really happy pair together. I think this one will really fill in and it, it will trail down the container as well. And I think it's a nice bright pop. So, you know, there's quite a bit of space in here, but there won't be for long. Okay, we're gonna pop over this grassy area and take a look at all of these. This is where we started today. And Rosa has been here. You can see the water coming out. That's a good sign. Okay, so we did use a lot of cannas this year because we did use a few last year. And it's the one thing that they said, do more of those. We love, loved those cannas. So cannas they shall have. More toucan coral in the center, more unplugged uh, so blue salvia. Uh, I think it's nice to kind of repeat some of the, the plants around the area so it looks kind of cohesive in a way. And then we did three Super Tunia Royal Velvets, two Super Venus Sparkling Amethyst, one of my favorite Super Venus ever. So there's one here and one over on that side. And then a Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime in the front. Oh, I kind of want to do this mix at my own house. 
In the rectangular shaped planters, we have three salvia. These are playing the blues. So these are a different variety of salvia than the ones that we just looked at. These get quite a bit bigger. Um, that's why I use these alone as a centerpiece. And then kind of ringed around the front with Supertunia Vista Jazzberry, Supertunia Vista Bubblegum, Jazzberry, Sweet Caroline, Sweetheart Lime, Bubblegum, Jazzberry, Bubblegum. And then this container, so this one's a 21 inch diameter and the bigger ones I just showed you, which there's another one at the very end, are 25 inches. This one looks kind of interesting because Angelonia. So this is an angel face super blue. These get huge, like 30 to 40 inches tall, <laughs> but they always arrive looking kind of little and sad and no color. But I think given some heat, these will start to grow super, super fast and they're a beautiful deep blue color. And then we've got Caroly Petite Pink right below, which these, uh, I think what, 14 to 24 inches. So it'll just fill in the area right below the Angelonia on both sides. And you can see I kind of put the centerpiece toward the back of the container so it can fill in this vertical space. And then this will be the step down. Then we have Super Bell's Plum. Aren't those the sweetest purple flowers? I love them. I think they look really pretty with the Gara right there. And then a Sweet Caroline uh, Raven right here. So a little bit different than the lime, just kind of mixing it up a bit. These three are repeats. So we did the same arrangement in this rectangular shaped container. Same arrangement in this 21 inch right here. And then in this 25 inch and in that one over there, we did the same as the first one. So you can see right there. Again, just to bring some cohesiveness to the space. Okay, so now I'm gonna head over to this building. Aaron found some good shade over there. Okay, so we have another, I think this one's 25 inches, the diameter. Now I did something very similar in this container last year and I liked it so much that I did kind of a repeat. So Truffula Pink Gomfrina as a centerpiece. These get so, so super duper big and they're so tough and they provide so much color that I wanted to use this one again in this container. Um, there's an unplugged pink salvia, which these are on the small side now, but they're gonna produce beautiful kind of compact salvia with bright pink blooms. It'll look really pretty with the gomfrina kind of, you know, a little bit more airy and feathery texture kind of poking up from the salvia. Superbina sparkling amethyst. There are three of those and then three cake pops purple verbena, which these right here aren't really like a, a super big trailing plant, but they're a beautiful filler and they incorporate really well with other plants. I've been able to try growing them for the last year or two and have really enjoyed what they bring to containers. And right over here, we did Surefire Red begonias last year, just that solely in here, and it was absolutely gorgeous. In fact, Rosa dug those out and saved them, so they're around here somewhere growing still. So this year I decided to change it up just a little bit, and I used Surefire Rose begonia instead of the red, and then put some Snowdrift Caladiums up front. I thought that would bring kind of a nice bright pop, and it sure does, doesn't it? especially once the surefires grow up and create that nice strong vertical, really pretty. And only two different kinds of plants. I love that when, you know, one or two things can really create a statement. Then we go around this corner. So this container last year, I used a lot of really warm colors, red and yellow and orange, beautiful mix like in and of itself, but right where it sits, I mean, this gets full on afternoon sun. We're dealing with kind of orangey brick, kind of tan colored rocks. It was a lot of warm, kind of dry looking things. So I decided to use cool colors here and I really, really like it. So we've got a purple fountain grass in the center. On either side, we did three cake pops, purple verbena. See how beautiful that is, just kind of mixed in. And so they do thicken up. In the beginning, they look a little bit um, thin, I guess you could say but they really do thicken up and send up a lot more branches with blooms. And then Super Junior Royal Velvet. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and then four Lemon Coral Sedum. This will be a fun one. Okay, now we need to head to the other side of this building to show you the rest of the planters. Here they are. This is actually another favorite of mine today. I love the mix of the Prince Tut with the Caladiums. I did these both the same too. Uh, so Prince Tut as a centerpiece. Then we have the Rose Glow Caladium. I used three of those. And then three of the Double Up White Begonias, which these, like the Double Up Pinks have green leaves. The Double Up Whites have kind of a bronzy green, really pretty. And then three Lemon Coral Sedum. So fairly simple. I mean, quite a number of plants, but fairly simple in its design. But a lot of these plants can take sun or shade. So it's perfect because you can see this side's in sun. This side is in shade. 
And at the moment, this one's in full shade. A lot of the caladiums, the begonias, the color blaze, coleus, a lot of them that we use are good for either sun or shade, so they're very versatile. Okay, I think we've got three more containers left all around the science building. Um, my brother was actually teaching in this building this morning. He came out and chatted with us for a while. So there's just one container in front of the science center, and I love it. I love it more than last year's. I can't even remember exactly what was in last year's, except for I think there was a salvia in there, which I love, but I like this mix of bright sunny colors. And I think they look really good in front of this blue sign, but we've got the purple fountain grass as a centerpiece. We've got, this is a new lantana called Luscious Citron. Huge flowers, absolutely gorgeous. Lady Godiva yellow calendulas, which is a favorite of mine. They grow huge, they're high performing plants. And then we've got Supertina Vista Snowdrift, just two of those because they get so enormous. And then we've got a Sweetheart Lime Sweet Potato Vine. That just looks like a happy mix to me. So this container is on the west side of the building, full afternoon sun. There is another one right here on the north side that's in pretty much shade all the time. And I think it looks pretty. Okay, here we are. I think this is a 21 inch container right here. We've got one Lime Time Coleus. It's kind of our centerpiece. This one will get nice and tall. Just a bunch of bright colors in here. Snowdrift Caladium. There are three Double Up Red Begonias in here. There are two Hippo Reds. So nice kind of deep color foliage accent. Uh, and this one as well, which is a Bewitched After Midnight Sweet Potato Vine. You can see the Hippo Red right over here. I always kind of want to make sure that the containers look pretty from all directions because I'm sure people walk through the grass right here and the sidewalk. And so I decided putting the centerpiece kind of back on this side facing the wall was the way to go. I think this is gonna be a really interesting one to watch grow and fill in. Okay, last container is kind of a repeat of a couple by the Student Services building. It's up in front on the east side of the Science Center. In fact, it's right by where we just planted up this entry bed. But we're going this way. Whoop, and they're doing something right here. I don't know what all that's for. Here it is. Yeah, this one is pretty much the same as the one in front of the Student Services building. Actually, there's two in front of the Student Services building, except for I used one extra Super Bells in this one and kind of placed the plants a little differently. So we'll see how they grow and which way we like the best. I think it's a really pretty blend of colors though, like the purple with the deep potato vine and then with the deep blue, it's just gonna be really striking, I think. And you guys, that is gonna do it for day three of planting down here at our local community college. It's a fun project. It's fun to be down here doing something different. It's fun to be using a whole bunch of different types of plants. I mean, I utilize red plants where I don't usually use red at my own house, uh, but it's fun to still plant it and see how it uh, intermixes and works with other plants. So anyway, we will be down here later on this season. Last year, we gave you two updates, like a midway and then at kind of end of the season um, update. So we hope to do this very same thing this year so we can show you how everything's doing. Uh, again, I'm super thankful that we have help, you know, Amy down here helping us uh, get all the plants and compost and everything moved around and then Rosa just right there getting things watered. It just makes a world of difference when everything just works like that. It just makes it pleasant and the plants are happy and that makes me happy. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.